we casting? So over the next few minutes, we're going to walk you through a real world. Uh, it's loading. It's loading. Uh, <laughs> well, while that's loading, let me just say, so we're going to walk you through in the next few minutes and a real world example of our, a potential real world example of what we face in a manned mission or crewed mission to Mars. So just imagine for a moment the oncoming storm. Is this? Nope, sorry. <clears throat> the oncoming storm. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you have, you have an information management system that's looking at your uh, energy consumption needs and your energy production needs. So how do you make your decisions? How do you move from a catastrophe that could be happening to a solution? As a commander of your, of your station, uh, again, on a remote star. So you, uh, here, this is the high seas systems monitoring system that, that's currently in use in Hawaii. And as you see, the system is pretty crude. The user interface doesn't give us a lot of interactive detail. Uh, it, it's just a splash page with some information. So what we want to do is propose a different way of organizing this information. And not only organizing the information, but also providing a predictive model that allows us to make real uh, real uh, mission critical decisions in real time, especially when that oncoming storm disconnects us from mission control, either temporarily or permanently. So we need to be able to make uh, real time uh, data use, I mean, uh, use of our data uh, on site. So we want to create a user friendly interface that provides uh, this information. It's clear and actionable. And we want to allow um, the system to be able to suggest and make uh, and uh, different power consumption models based on previous, current, and forecasted conditions. So essentially the way Proxima works is that it feeds information from the current capacity of the solar panels, the battery generation uh, production, uh, and it feeds all that into our AI, which then promotes and produces scenarios if an unnormal situation occurs. And then it executes it. It gives it to the commander, or the staff and it says, do this. So this is our basic dashboard. And again, this is a, a, an upgrade of the previous dashboard that's currently being used uh, at high seas. So it gives us, again, the same kind of information. But in addition to that, it gives us uh, future forecasted weather trends. It has the ability to, you know, with a, a variety of sensor packages, we can actually see what the overcast situations are. And then we also get a snapshot of the overall power consumption um, and the available power, which is just essentially a metric of generated power plus uh, produced power minus consumed power. And then we have a digital circuit breaker that is a breakout board from the previous screen that allows you to turn on and off individual experiments or uh, equipment as needed. So again, here you go. Um, you've got the consumption levels and the different scenarios that come up. Uh, the environment tab, which tells us what we are facing, so there's either satellite imagery or, or camera feeds. And then the system provides, uh, you know, based on an oncoming storm, it allows us to look at three different scenarios and gives us a way of stepping down. So it says we've selected um, option number two in the previous screen, and on, you know, and that gives us step-by-step -step instructions on how to step down our systems. So Chris is gonna walk us through how this will oh. So in addition to um, providing tools to assist our scientists uh, in, in, other, um, in other planets, uh, we built a tool to help uh, people back home understand their, their power consumption needs. Um, we built this, uh, this quick VR uh, demo, and uh, the environment adjusts uh, to the simplified dashboard um, so that you know for different times of the day. <laughs> I have a quick question while they're still exploring Mars. <laughs> um, this, is, this is so beautiful and, and definitely I would, I mean, I'm not going to say anything comparing it because a lot of good teams worked on the previous dashboard too, but this is beautiful. Um, I was just curious in comparison to that, um, did you add any, uh, you highlighted some of the features like the step down uh, for um, uh, weather conditions and, and, and things like that. Um, did you maintain all the features that were already there on the dashboard? Were there any that you eliminated? Or? Uh, so we maintained all the previous inputs with the exception of the water tanks, which we forgot to put on there. 
So, but yeah. Um, so we adjusted it from ours, um, but our designer's uh, computer stopped working. So I apologize for the precipitation there. The, uh, <laughs> so as a data scientist, I squirm anytime I see like a deterministic uh, forecast. So I'd, I'd just advise maybe consider using a probabilistic forecast for your dashboard where it says everything looks all right for the next 35 hours. I would just say, you know, that for the next X number of hours, you know, we're, we're Pretty sure, X percent sure that everything is, yeah. yeah um, I think that kind of, yeah, gives you a confidence band. Um, the other thing I'd say, are you guys familiar with SCADA at all? Um, so SCADA is a power management software that's pretty commonly used in the U.S. right now. It's used in um, the military uses it a lot. It's used in a lot, a lot of places. Um, SCADA has its limitations. Um, the big one being UI. Um, it's extremely complex and it gives you a ton of really granular data, but it doesn't really tell you any insights. So I'd love to see you guys this. I, I think there's an expansion of this into kind of that same um, is not only giving you that like super granular and technical data, but give someone an insight with it um, so that there's not just the technical person that could think about this. Yeah, so I guess like from our standpoint, we certainly see this as a set of different models, for instance, to forecast the future power consumption based on the previous experience, right? And also forecast the, you know, solar panels, which is the single source of energy. So we need to understand, you know, how much energy we'll have like in two hours, what's the predicted consumption and whether we, we have a balance. So this is one set of the, you know, the models we need to build and train, right? The other, like the, you know, big AI thing is that to do the decision support system, and like certainly we haven't built it because like we need to gather a lot of information right now, yeah. right? But this is doable. It's certainly doable and there are some examples on the market where you can, oh, yeah. you know, have the similar cases depending on your previous experience, access rate, etc. So that's a, but like what we are showing is that the prototype mm -hmm. of, the, of the system. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, guess I mean, also, and just to add to that, uh, one of them, the snapshot features, because we realize that there's so much information coming into the station at any given moment that our, 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 our goal was that if I walk by this panel or I pull it up, um, I can look at one met metric. And right now, like the green bar that's right there is just our available power, which is in real time adjusted every day on current conditions. So at any given point, I, the Michigan Mayor, so our power, our power generation is down by 30%. We need to cut these things. So go to your lab and figure out what you need to cut. Yeah. Yeah, and so from a uh, command and control standpoint, that's, that's, unless you have that super technical knowledge, it can be really difficult to make those decisions. So I love, the, um, I love that you take it one step further. You're not just providing information, but you're providing recommendations rooted in, in historical data. I, lo I, I love it. I think that's a really smart way to go with this. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 please. But I wanted to add also that, you know, this system is designed to Mars, but certainly the, some of these features can be applied to the you know, to the real Earth conditions and uh, use cases. Like the one thing, like the one type of the, you know, critical event we see is a dust storm coming. But like, if you think of it, let's say in China, they have, you know, the smoke and like, if you have your solar panels, you know, that will, inf you know, impact your, you know, the, the production rate of your solar energy. So some, something like this can be applied also to, you know, to the Earth conditions. Oh yeah. I, I love that you tied it back to the earth. Um, I was just curious about the options that you provided for for um, conditions. What was your planning process in terms of which processes should be stepped down? Like, was it based on? I might have missed this. Like, was it based on information that High Seas provided, or or? We we looked at some of their we looked at some of their press releases and some of the information on there online, and and they outlined like mission critical can, like. Component. So essentially, like life support, HVAC, uh, and then beyond that, we assume that perhaps, like when you're in, you know, you're running in a critical experiment, that if I've got uh, biological samples that have to be maintained at temperature, uh, I can assign that as a critical function. So that is excluded from the option sets for when the system says you need to step down 30% power, and these are the systems we suggest you step down. You know, I appreciate that. That's great. Yeah. I just want to say I'm very glad that you guys created the Matt Damon rescue system. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about don't have to worry about the dust storms clouding up the solar panels like in The Martian. So thank you for that. He um, came up. Yeah, uh, he we, we we play squash. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, like we have this uh, 
if you're on Mars, like in, in NASA plans a long-term mission, they're gonna potentially have a you know resupply drops and, and all these like anticipated like further exploration, right? So, but here on Earth, we don't have that resupply drop option. So for us, there is no resupply mission. So if we can port this solution from Mars or from high seas to China, to Saudi Arabia, uh, to United States, which are the some of the largest um, per per you know per uh, square foot of, of solar power production in the in the world right now, if we can get those solutions to them. Um, we can maybe manage our systems a little bit better.